Nicole here, and I'm so excited to show you part three of what's in my brand photography gear bag. Today is all about the large kit. Let's check it out. The large gear kit really involves additional lighting and you could also be tethering onto a laptop. This may also require additional lighting stands, backgrounds, tables, bounce, scrims, all these other different pieces of equipment that may not be necessary in your small and medium gear kit. I've been a brand photographer for over 10 years now and I've shot on a corporate level, client base to a personal brand, solopreneur um, client base and love it. So I wanted on this video to really dive into the gear and tech side of my gear bag. I've covered my small kit, my medium kit, and in my large kit, we get more technical with lighting, we have backgrounds to consider, and I really wanted to jump in on the gear itself. So let's do it. When I first started out in photography, I wasn't sure which camera to purchase. So I always tell new photographers to rent equipment to see how it feels. So at the time, it was Canon, Nikon, and I really loved the feel of the Canon. Nowadays, I now have upgraded to the Canon 5D Mark IV. I love this camera. I love the feel of the camera. I use a battery grip, so I have two batteries inside, which can help on photo shoots. I don't have to worry about battery life. So some of the th features that I love about this camera is that first, it's a full frame. And my photography style is to shoot in camera. And what that means is when I'm composing an image, that's how I visualize the final result to be. Now you can still crop, you can still edit in Lightroom or your editing software, but that's my personal preference. When I'm shooting, that's my mindset. If I'm shooting more editorial, then of course I'll leave more space around the image, but that's how I'm typically shooting most of the time. So I love that this is a full frame. Other options that I love in this camera is that it has a Wi-Fi component. And I was so excited to get this camera because of that Wi-Fi. This now allows me to use the Canon app on my phone and I can shoot remotely with that or I could have it on hand for my clients to see the images coming through and we can kind of see the photo shoot happening, unfolding live for them and they can see what I'm seeing and make adjustments if needed. So I love enhancing that client experience for them using that app and the Wi-Fi has been great. Another amazing feature is that the back screen here is a touch screen. So I can now zoom in on images, I can scroll through on images, I can go through the menu and scroll through on the menu as well. It's a great feature because we're so used to such responsive technology with our phones, it's nice to have that on the camera as well. Some other amazing features of this camera is that it also shoots 4K video, has great autofocus capabilities, and the ISO is amazing. I've been recently shooting at a martial arts studio, and typically at some gyms, the lighting is always a challenge. So in this particular gym, they had the black matting, the gray walls, MMA cage is all black with black matting. So those are probably the highest ISO shots that I've taken recently. I think they're at like 10,000 and I was so excited and happy with the results of those images. So I'm loving the ISO on this camera as well. Okay, let's get into more gear. So the first lens I wanted to discuss is my 35 prime lens. It's an f1.4, so it's amazing in those low light situations. It also is forcing me closer to my subject and you need to now move around more. In the beginning of my career, I shot a lot of zooms and I was heavy on more sports and fitness. So I would be on a field, I'd be further away from my subject. So zooms were ideal. Now with working with solopreneurs and entrepreneurs who are working with their hands and 
um, working at their desks or I can be closer to my subject and capture those impactful images. So the 35 is what I've been using for my overhead images and detail shots, but the 1.4 is amazing for those low light situations. Okay, on to the next. For a zoom, the 2470. This is kind of like a classic workhorse lens that most photographers have in their kit. It's great for portraits. Now I can kind of zoom in and out so I can be further away from my subject or I can get in for those detail shots. Um, love the 2470. Always have this in my kit. Going back to Prime, I'm going to talk about my 100. Now I have a 100 macro. This is a 2.8 as well. Um, my lenses, I try, all my lenses are 2.8 or below because I'm always capturing action and the um, f-stop, I can have a higher shutter speed. So um, if I'm shooting at 2.8, my shutter speeds won't be a problem. The 100 macro has been amazing for all my food detail images. This is also great for portraits. So again, another macro, it's gonna force me um, to move more, but this is a great kind of secret weapon for those detail shots. Okay, the last lens, and we've seen this in my small kit and my medium kit, and really most photo shoots I have this with me, <laughs> is my 7200. Another classic uh, lens that most photographers have this is another workhorse. All my fitness, sports, portraits, details, zooming in at that 200 um, millimeter, and even in the 70, having that drop off, that amazing bokeh or that blurred out um, background is such an impactful shot. And you really, every time I take an image, know exactly that that's the 7200 because it's just that distinct style in the image love this lens. Okay, on to more gear. So I just went through my four main lenses, the 7200, the 35, the 2470, and my 100. Based on the photo shoot kind of dictates what lenses are coming with me, but three out of the four are typically always with me. The 100 is very specific. Um, for a photo shoot if I'm bringing that along and that also depends on the size of the gear that I'm taking So if I'm doing a small kit the 100 will probably stay at home Okay, so for my large kit We're getting into lighting. Okay, so let's talk about lighting. There's so many options on the market This is my um, flashpoint monolight system that I've been loving because it's it's wireless I can bring it on location. I just need my one stand, a sandbag, and it gives such great output. I also love that with the transponder on top of my camera, I can now control the light from my camera, which means I don't have to run over to the light, make the adjustments, run back, then re-engage with the client trying to get those shots going back and forth. I can control it all with this transponder. Love that. With the larger kit, you may be thinking about additional lighting. One way I'm doing this is with my speed light. If I had another flash point, of course that works great. But if I had my speed light, the system also comes with this accessory. And now I can add my speed light I can set this up on set with another light stand or I have these great clips by Manfrotto. I'll add this below so you can get of a sense. This has every, this has a large clip you can clip and hide away. It has the hot shoe on the top. It has so many accessories that you can add in modifiers. But now, I can control this secondary lighting with the transponder because you can see there's five slots here. So now I'm in control of all these different lights with my camera and I'm still engaging with the client. You're always thinking of that client experience. So that's my lighting solution when I'm talking about different or additional lighting. So once I move on to my larger kit, this is involving more lighting 
potentially, depending on the photo shoot, and also considering your background. So there's a lot of different options on the market. I'm going to touch on kind of two options that I've been using. One is your traditional rolled out backdrops and you'll find on the market paper and also the vinyl. These are both from the same company, Savage. I love doing the vinyl material because it's so durable. You can just wipe it clean if it does get dirty and it comes in some great colors. So I have a gray and I have a white. I also have a larger white, which is about, um, so these are about six feet and great for a single individual headshot or portrait shot. Um, the larger size, you can add in more individual. So again, based on your photo shoot. Another option is color. So I had a photo shoot where we needed a specific color. And so we went with this paper option. And over time, as it ripped or got dirty, I could just cut a nice clean line and now it's ready to go for my next shoot. Okay. So behind me is another option. And this is a V flat. Now V flats can also be an add on to your kit. As you can see, it has a nice bounce. You can fill in light. It also is black on the background. So it can kind of, you can kind of play with the lighting that way. You can see with me standing here, it could be a great one person backdrop. Now, this is also a DIY portable V-flat. I have a video on my channel going through all the steps on how I created this V-flat. So it simply breaks down and, and folds up and I can bring it on location with me. So depending on the photo shoot, I could potentially just bring this V-flat and I no longer need the additional stands, the C stands for the backgrounds that I typically would be bringing. So that's something to consider as well. We're, as photographers, we're always looking to streamline our gear kit so it's we can quickly set up, quickly break down, and start editing our images. Okay, let's talk about more gear. Another thing to consider with your larger kit is if you need to tether on your laptop. So here are a couple examples of when this comes into play. I had a magazine shoot where we were shooting the cover. I had an art director on site. I wanted to be tethered so she could see the images coming through on the laptop. I've also used this when I do product photography because it's those fine details in the composition you wanna get set before you're doing a bunch of the same images for product photography. Um, so with that, with your laptop, you're going to have, obviously you're going to be shooting with your camera, but then you're going to be tethered. I have a whole video on my channel on how to attach these to the camera and the tether cord to your laptop. So definitely check that out if you've never tethered before. It's pretty amazing. And of course, in speaking of protecting gear, I've been using this laptop case since the beginning of my career. It's a company that also has produced like knee pads and shoulder pads for sports. So the impact resistance is amazing. But I've been using this. I slide this into probably a second bag that I have with all these other accessories um, for my large kit. So this is always, it's always nice to protect all the equipment and gear with protection on our mind i have a second we saw this we saw this 1050 pelican case lighting transmitters and batteries and stuff to protect i also have a second one that's a different color because i'm always thinking of organization and being efficient on my photo shoots this is now for a portable drive a mouse anything that i need in relationship to tethering and my laptop so those would now be added to my gear kit. So other things that may fall into the large gear kit is reflectors. Now you have your, this is like a Westcott, it's a six in one system. So I'm using the scrim now to help with my lighting for this video, 
but this is also a reflector that's amazing for when you're doing portraits and you want to bounce some light in. As you can see over here, I have another panel. It's six feet. It has a silver, a gold, a black. This requires another stand, but could be good if I had one key light, maybe I'm using the V-flat, and this reflector to bounce light in. So there's so many different configurations. My large gear kit has really just evolved based on the photo shoots that I've had. And I'm always thinking of logistics. What's the best method to get the shots that we need? Is there another piece of equipment that would be great for my kit that I could envision myself using on future sites? And that's really how it's evolved into my larger kit. Um, do I bring every piece of equipment you see with me on a shoot? No, it's really picking and choosing what's gonna get the results that you need. Okay, let's talk about some other gear. So I bought this tripod with the profits of my first commercial job 10 years ago. It's a Gitzo, it looks brand new. I have a really right stuff, a ball head on top. And honestly, my thought process is that I'm investing into my business and into the gear. I don't wanna to have to buy it twice. So I've had this for now 10 years. It looks like the day I bought it and been so happy with it. So this is another piece of equipment you may need to bring on a large kit photo shoot day. So okay. that is my large kit. As you can see, there's a lot of components, lots of parts and pieces to manage, to troubleshoot, to problem solve, to get everything together to get the images that you need. I typically have everything packed onto my rock and roll and multi-cart. I can professionally roll in with all my gear and bring everything back out to my car. It's been such a time saver. There you have it, that is the large kit. As you can see from moving from the small to the medium to the large kit, it involves more lighting, more equipment, more problem solving. It just gets more technical as you go. So please let me know if you have any questions. I'll outline all my gear below. Hope this was helpful. See you next time.